Oh, matter of fact, before we go in and watch this video, do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell. Bless. My name is Yehoshua. The organization that we represent is Israel United in Christ. And just a brief summary of what we teach. We teach that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's chosen people. Right. Not in a spiritual sense, in a literal sense. So if you haven't seen the sign right here, it's important that you come and take a look. Tierra, come take a look. You need to find out what tribe you come from. Sister Deborah, you need to come I take a look. Picture. You took a picture? picture. Alright, where you fall on that sign right there? Where, where you find yourself on that sign? Which one? Let me see. On the right side, you'll find what America calls us. On the left side, you'll find what God calls us. I come from the tribe of Judah. They call me an African American. When I got to check a box right on a job you. application, I put right African American. I'm right with you. You right with me. So you yeah. come from the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Sister Tierra, what tribe do you come from? I either come from the tribe of Judah or the tribe of, is that a T or an I at the Wait, bottom? At the I bottom? think it's an I. Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah. It's a car? No, nah, at the very bottom. Oh, Isaiah. 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 Naph Tyler. I either a Isaiah or Judah. No, no, no. No, ain't no, 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 no. It's a scattered throughout Africa that's and abroad. Right. That's right. Okay. That's What's right. your problem? My origination is right. from Africa, so yeah. it could possibly be. That's you think you're from Africa, sis? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. very well could That's what they taught us, right? Yeah. That's what they taught us. No, we were everywhere. But in God, in the book, it tells you to seek knowledge for yourself to show yourself approved. There you go. So you therefore, you go I have right. sought knowledge for myself. I'm yeah. So I'm just gonna say I could be because yeah. I don't know exactly what I am. Yes. I could be Isaiah Orchard. I'm not gonna find something I don't know. I understand. We're gonna explain it to you. Your, your father was he a so-called black man? Yeah. Yeah. So-called black man. Okay. The so-called blacks here in America come from the tribe of Jew. I'm gonna explain that. We've been explaining the importance of a, of a man and of a woman. The man also determines the nationality of the child. I want to explain that to you real quick. You got numbers? Yes, sir. All right, y'all check this out. Read. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1. Thank you. And verse 20. Uh -huh. And the children of Reuben, Israel's... 18. Verse, excuse me. Verse 18. Uh -huh. Excuse me. And they assembled. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So all the congregation of the nation of Israel, everybody you see here on this sign, we all got together on the first day of the second month. What did we do? Read. And they declared their pedigrees. Their pedigrees. Y'all familiar with like dog breeding and all of that? So that's the lineage. Read. After their families uh -huh. by the house of their fathers. So your father is going to determine the lineage of the seed. Man holds the seed, which is the sperm. We put it inside the woman, inside the womb. It uh, what's a good word? It uh, it gets developed inside the egg and then it comes forth as a child. So whatever the father is, whatever the tree is, that fruit is gonna be the exact same thing. Y'all follow me so far? Exactly. All praises to the most high. So what we've been explaining today is uh, the importance of the man. I, I wanna go to uh, Malachi chapter one, verse six. That's it. Because a lot of times, we, you know, we live in this modern era where we think things are different now because society has changed. But what we got to understand is that our, our standards of living, our standard of morality, yeah, 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 you got what I want? Three and six. Our standards cannot change based on society because we serve the true and living God, the Most High God. And this is what the Bible says about the Most High God. Read. The book of Malachi, chapter three, verse six. Uh -huh. For I am the Lord. I'm the Lord. I change not. I change not. Read. Right. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now that last part is very important. It says, I am the Lord God. I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. What does that mean? That means if God did change, he would look at our behavior and he would say, I don't want to deal with y'all no more. So we're lucky that God doesn't change. So what's what's our response to the fact that God doesn't change? We gotta change. We must repent. 
we must return back to God his law, statutes, and commandments because that's what we've fallen from. When we, when, we, when we ask ourselves, how do we get here in this position in America? How are we the last fire? How are we the first fire? I'm sorry, last hired, first fire. Mm -hmm. how, do, uh, how does Derek Chauvin's knee end up on one of my brother's neck? Mm -hmm. How is he going to get off free? Because the Bible says all of these things. What must we do to correct these things? What you got? What must we do? Repentance. Yeah, give me repentance. Yes, give me sir. Acts chapter 2. Yes, sir. Give me Acts chapter 2. What must we do to change our circumstance and our situations? It's not group economics. It's not going to church on Sunday. It's not Islam. It's not Egyptology. It's not politics. Romans 12. It's the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. 3 and 19? Yes, sir. Three. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent. The Bible says, repent. Read. Ye therefore, uh -huh. and be converted. So we must repent and be converted. Because remember, the Most High God does not change. We are the ones that must convert. We must change. God never told our sisters to wear pants. So God, we're not asking God to change his mind right. or his opinion about pants. We're not asking God to change his mind about the order of man, woman, child. We're not asking God to do that. We must change. We're the ones that must be converted. Read. That your sins... That your what? That your sins... Uh -huh may be blotted out. So the reason that we must convert is we want our sins to be blotted out. Sister Deborah, what is sin? Corruption. Sin is corruption. The flesh. The flesh. Okay, Sister Tierra, what is sin? Anything that's not in accordance to obedience. Not, not in accordance to obedience to who? God. To the Most High God. To the God. Most High God. My brother, I didn't catch your name earlier. Tony. Tony, Tony, what is sin? I can't. Not too sure? I got you, Tony. That's what we out here for. My brother with the black and mild. What is sin? Sin. Sin, yeah. I think it's, uh... Do things that's not of God. Doing things that's not of God. And what's your name, brother? My name is Calvin, man. Calvin. I got Calvin. I got Tony. Sister Tierra. Sister Deborah. All right, now we're all the same people, right? Yeah. I want all of us to have the same answer the next time someone asks us, what is sin? The common denominator amongst our people can only be one thing. That's the Bible, the King James Bible. So we're gonna go into the Bible to define exactly what sin is, and then we're gonna go back, all right? Read that. This is the book of First John, chapter three, verse four. So First John chapter three, verse four is gonna give us a biblical definition of exactly what sin is. And I want my sisters and my brothers to have a good understanding, read. Whosoever committeth sin, whosoever commits sin, transgressive also the law. If you commit sin, that means you transgress the law, read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the Bible says that the definition of sin, sin is the transgression of the law. So we went over a law earlier for our sisters. Who remembers that law? Right, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man, right? So that's a sin that our sisters have to convert from, right? Because God doesn't change. What he said in the Old Testament is still relevant in the New Testament, all right? All right, what else, did my, what else did the Lord say in the Old Testament? I'm going to give you all some more examples. Uh, you still got Acts 3 and 19? Read that again. Yes, sir. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Uh-huh. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So when the Lord comes, he's going to refresh the earth. What is the Lord going to refresh the earth from, Calvin? Sin. From sin. From sin. Calvin, you understand what you said? I grew up in the Bible, man. All right, but look, you ain't grown up in the truth, the knowledge that you're an Israelite, and you got to keep God's laws. That's right. Man, I grew up in the Bible. Check this out, Calvin. If Christ is coming back to refresh the earth from sin, if you're still in the midst of sin, what's going to happen to you? I'm going to hell. You going to hell. You getting destroyed. So it's important for my, my brothers and my sisters to understand what? 
But it also say judge not that not, that, they, that you not be judged. We're not judging right now. You don't put the judge. We're instructing. We're teaching. Yeah, we're showing not, our brothers and sisters. Judge. This is love according to the Bible. That's right. This is love according to the Bible. Bring it out. Now I don't want to deal with the with the judge not yet. I want to deal with uh uh. The, uh, the, the one about uh, all the sinners of my people will be destroyed. Okay. Which one is that? Amos 9. Yeah, yeah, Amos. Give me Amos 9. When the Lord comes back, he's coming back to refresh the earth of sin. So our brothers and our sisters must ask themselves, what sins am I in the midst of so that I don't get refreshed by the Lord? Right. You got to refresh yourself. You got to convert yourself. Because if the Lord got to do it, he's taking heads. Your own blood is going to have to be your sacrifice for your sins because you didn't accept the blood of Christ. That's right. The blood of Christ was to teach you to examine myself, what sins am I in the midst of, and let me turn away from those sins. You got that? Yes, sir. Bring that up. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. This is what the Lord God says himself. When Christ comes back, all the sinners of his people, the people on this side, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, all the sinners, all the people still breaking God's commandments will do what? Shall die by the sword. Shall die by the sword. Is that it? Which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Everybody thinks that evil isn't going to overtake us. They think, well, I'm going to get saved in a, in a couple more years. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a keep doing me for right now, and then I'm eventually get right with the Lord. No, that's not how we got to operate according to the scriptures. Give me Psalms 119 and verse 60. Yes, sir. We got to follow the righteous examples of our forefathers and our foremothers, and this is what King David said in Psalm 119. Bring that up. The Book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 60. Give me 59. Verse 59. Uh huh. I thought on my way. King David thought on his ways and turn my feet unto thy testimony. So King David thought about the things that he was doing over here, and he turned his feet to the testimonies of the Most High God. Read. I made haste. He did what? I made haste. King David made haste to do what? And delayed not to keep thy commandments. You see that Christianity has taught us to separate Christ from the commandments, grace from the commandments, but grace teaches us to keep God's commandments. This time frame that we're living in, it's not a time frame for us to continue in our sins. It's a time for us to convert from our sins. Go back to Acts 3, yes, sir. and then we're going to uh, show them what converts us in Psalms. Yes, sir. All right, give me Acts 3 and 19 one more time. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent ye therefore. Repent. And be converted. And be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. So it's telling you what to convert from. You must convert from your sins. You must convert from your sins. Now give me Psalms. What was that, a, a, 11? About change? Yeah. Yes, sir, Psalms 19. 19 and 7, that's right. The book of Psalms chapter 19, verse 7, is going to biblically show us how we convert. What's going to teach us to convert? Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. My sister right here, why don't you come, come a little closer? I want to show you these signs real quick. Come on up, sis. Read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. The law. The what? The law uh -huh. of the Lord is perfect. So the Bible says that the law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is what tells a man that he got to have a beard on his face. The law of the Lord is what we read in Deuteronomy 22 and 5 that says a woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Don't let anybody try to trick you and confuse you and make you think that pants did not exist in the Bible. Pants existed in the Bible for the men. They were called breeches. Go ahead, sis. I heard you say a beard is for a man. Yes. Why? I'm glad you asked. Hey, uh, Yuria, give me the sign of a compact Bible dictionary. I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the law. Yes, I've never heard that. I'm glad you asked, sis. But I'm married to a man that's got a beard. Good, uh, so good. I just want to know to tell him. He yeah, probably yeah, don't know. <laughs> All right, I want that too. That so law. I'm going to show you the law. I'm going to show you the example that Christ has left for. Give, give, me, the, give me the law first. Uh, bring up the beard. Yeah. Give, me, uh, give me like two minutes. All right, so look, we're going to give you the, we're going to give you the biblical explanation why a man must have a beard on his face. So re remember in Acts 3 and 19, it says, repent and be converted, right? Um, 
And what happens if a man can't grow a beard? Because that's how the son that can't grow a beard. Right, if you can't grow a beard, you know, you can't grow a that's fine. I'm going to show you the law first, yeah. all right? Because okay. everything started with the laws that were given to Moses. Right. Those are the laws that we fell away from that got us into the position that we're in now. Leviticus. You want the beer, sir? Yeah. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Listen good. Ye shall not round the corners of your beards, uh -huh. neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. All right, so now the of thy head, right? Yes. Excuse me. Verse 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. So the first reason that a man must have a beard on his face is because who said so? God said so. God said so. But guess what? God had a son named Jesus the Christ. He came to the earth, right? And he left us an example for us to follow. So give me that. Give me give me Peter before you go to Isaiah. Yes, sir. Give me uh Peter 2 and 21. I can't remember if it's first or second Peter 2 and 21. First. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. This is the importance of Christ. Because the, the, in, the, in the book of John, it said that the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, right? And this was the purpose of that word becoming flesh. Read that. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Uh -huh. For he even here unto were ye called. So we were called, all the men, all the women of the nation of Israel, we were called to repentance. Read because Christ, Who? Christ Three. also suffered for us, uh -huh. leaving us an example. So the Bible says that Christ suffered for us and he left us an example. Read. That ye should follow his steps. Okay, so right now we're on point number two as to why a man must have a beard. The first point was who said so? God said so. And the second point is Christ came to this earth Hey, sister, I want you to come a little closer. Come on, a little closer. Yeah, come on. Bring the chicken wing and the, you know, potato wedge. Whatever you got. Come on. <laughs> All right. So the second example is Christ left us an example. And what did Christ have on his face? I'm going to show you. Bring it out in Isaiah. You got it? Yes, sir. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 6. Uh-huh. I gave my back to the smiter. So this is a prophecy of Christ coming. Remember he got whipped? Yeah. That's what the prophecy said. That's, why, that's how Christ was a fulfillment of the law and the prophets. All the things that were prophesied to happen to the future Messiah, Christ came and those things happened to him. So the prophecy was that he would give his back to Smiters, read. And my cheeks uh -huh. to them that plucked off the hair. And he gave his cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. So when they were torturing Christ, they whipped him. And what'd they do? They ripped off his beard. Got it. So our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, That's right. had a beard on his face. So God told us, and our example had one. Now give me the Zondervan. Give me the Zondervan. This is the importance. Step aside real quick. Yes, this is the importance of a man having a beard. This is a, tell me what you read. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay. This is the definition of beard. Uh-huh. A badge of manly dignity. The Bible, that's all I need. The Bible says that a beard is a badge of manly dignity. I like that. I like that. You like that, right? I like that. You like that, right? So if but, we... But my question is, again, if... Yeah, I got... My husband has a beard. Correct. No but problem. But your son can't grow it. Exactly. Your son can't grow it. And that's fine, sis. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I'm going to take so you... what happens I'm a, in I'm that situation? Take you, I'm going to take you back to the law again. Uh, give me uh, give me Leviticus 21 and 5. Yes, sir. It's a, you want to pay close attention to some of these words, all right? So this is the importance of the beard. I'm sorry, sis, the, the wind is getting my pages real quick. Check this out. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. Uh-huh. They shall not make... Key word. Again? They shall not make... Read. ...baldness upon their head. So the scripture says that you cannot make baldness upon your head. Now... You got one brother here and one brother there, right? Neither brother has a beard. One brother used a razor to make baldness on his face because he cut his hair off. The next brother didn't touch his face at all and he can't grow one. Which one of those two brothers is in the midst of sin? The one who cut it. The one who cut it. 
Right, so in the in the sense of your son, if he can't grow a beard, is he in the midst of sin? No. No, because he did not make baldness upon his head right. or upon his face. So your your son is safe. Well, I know he's safe. Right. I, I just wanted to hear right. if it was something I didn't know. No, and yeah. a lot of times pu puberty has to happen at but some point. Right. So, I like that. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of things in the scriptures that Christianity has never taught us. They never taught us who you were according to the Bible. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.